latest news talk with Julia Cosby at International News Channel and Take TV is on Ontario's ongoing corona pandemic situation. Ontario Premier Doug Ford has apologized for increasing police enforcement powers and closing playgrounds. He said that his government moved too fast. He said, quote, simply put, we got it wrong. We made a mistake, unquote. We move fast to put in measures in place to reduce mobility. But we move too fast. And I know that some of those measures, especially around enforcement, they went too far. Simply put, we got it wrong. We made a mistake. These decisions, they left a lot of people very concerned. In fact, they left a lot of people angry and upset. I know we got it wrong. I know we made a mistake. And for that, I'm sorry and I sincerely apologize. The Premier also announced a paid sick leave program for Ontario workers after months of saying a provincial policy wasn't needed. He said that the province is now working on a solution because the federal government hasn't expanded its own policy. Unfortunately, Monday's federal budget didn't include the important improvements to the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit that we needed to see. That's why we are now working on our own solution to fill those gaps for everyone in Ontario. He said people forced into quarantine should not have to worry about their jobs or income. I'm joined with Conservative MPP Sharif Sabaway from Mississauga Air Mills Riding. Thank you for joining me, Sharif. What's the situation of the third wave of the pandemic in your riding and how are you tackling it? Actually, the third wave uh, been more aggressive than uh, maybe even the second wave. Like we... Uh, we got good grip on the second wave, but the third wave have uh, been uh, hitting us very hard. Um, the numbers of ICU cases are going uh, uh, above up. the above the limits, which we feel safe because we need to make sure that there's enough ICU units for the uh, regular business of the hospitals. All the time we have accidents, we have em emergency operations, which we need to make sure that we have enough space. But uh, more than 70% of the ICU beds now currently are COVID cases. And that's very alarming for us. And that's what caused all this, uh, uh, I would say, had to take action immediately to protect the people of Ontario. The only thing it can protect us is to make sure that we have vaccine. Like we have to make sure that the people are vaccinated. When the people are vaccinated, we can be uh, more safe to open and get along with our life. Which will bring me to the uh, point which everybody's talking about why we are not opening vaccination for some of the essential services, teachers, uh, frontline uh, workers like the cashiers and the restaurant workers and stuff. It's all virtualizing what we have from the vaccine. If we have enough vaccine from the federal government, we could vaccinate everybody. Doug Ford said it, we can vaccinate the whole Ontario in one month if we have the vaccine. And I would remind you something. Every year we do the flu vaccination, every year. We never heard about problem with flu vaccination or some people trying to get the flu vaccination. There's no vaccine because the logistics, the infrastructure is there and the amount of vaccine we need is there. Now, when we don't have enough vaccine, we have to prioritize the small amount of vaccine we have to the higher priority than the lower priority, less priority and less priority. But if we have enough numbers, we shouldn't have to take such drastic measures. We could vaccinate everyone. We could open the vaccination for multiple ages. We can make the vaccine as per recommendation of Pfizer every month, like second dose after a month. But if we don't have enough vaccine, we need to spread what we have over more people to vaccinate more people first shot if we have enough vaccine we could get the first shot mm -hmm. second shot in time the expansion of the, the amount of time between first shot and second shot is due to lack of vaccine 
So when some people talking about our efficiency or our government efficiency in uh, dismantling the vaccine, I would say we can talk from now till tomorrow morning about the efficiency. But 99% efficiency of zero is zero. So there's no need to talk about efficiency when we don't have vaccine. Okay, so this is the first thing. But in saying that, we expanded vaccination to pharmacies. We have more than 1,200 pharmacies now uh, do vaccinations. We opened some of the uh, uh, um, pharmacies, 24 by 7, Schubert especially, 24 by 7, so that we expand the hours where vaccine can be uh, taken, as well as the capacity of the vaccinating vaccination of the centers, which is now, let's say we can, we are capable of vaccinate between 200,000 to 300,000. If we need to, and we have the vaccine, we can maybe operate some of those centers 24 by seven as well, but we don't have the vaccine. So this is the, what we are trying to do is we are trying to reach to the people. We are trying to reach out to um, uh, marginalized group, a small ethnic group, different languages. I, I hope you've seen some of the announcements which we are doing in, I think, 30 different languages um, by MPs like me and like other MPPs, um, uh, giving the message in the, their native languages of many groups to make sure that even groups which is maybe not perfect in English can get the message. Now, that was a really long answer. Thank you so much for all the information. I feel like it's been kind of pent up. Uh, to to make a comment on one of the first things that you started saying is about the hospital beds and surgeries and there's not enough beds. So I've been seeing this a lot on my social media and uh, different people posting about this, lots of articles about people needing surgery, but it's being postponed, postponed, postponed. Uh, can you talk? Uh, can you say anything about this? Uh, actually, I, I think this is not fair for the government because we are not the one who they do prioritize which is urgent, have to be done now, or what what can be postponed till a later time. This is all medical decisions taken by the medical people. We are facilitators only we we don't we don't change schedules of hospitals we don't change you don't bitterize operations this is all medical decisions taken by medical doctors and medical teams of those hospitals not us okay so to move on to my next question how does the 2021 budget help your riding and city precisely to face the pandemic challenges so you are talking about our provincial budget yes so in our provincial budget, there is more than 980 million in direct payments to parents through COVID child benefits. This amount is the, 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 uh, divided into about $400 uh, per bear, uh, bear, uh, kid uh, use age of 0 to 12 and about $500 for use up to age of 21. So we are trying to help the parents to uh, um, to um, during this tough time in the COVID, there is um, next phase of the pandemic, which we are putting a lot of money into the protecting health of the people, adding more money into the health system to be able to expand uh, our services during the pandemics. We are adding more ICU rooms. We are adding more beds, hospital beds. We are accelerating. Um, the creation of new long-term care, like Mississauga, my riding by itself, actually not, the whole Mississauga by itself got 1,084 new upgraded <clears throat> long-term care beds. This is only Mississauga. Mm -hmm. There's more than 30,000 new long-term care beds have been allocated in the last year and this year and the coming two years. Again, if we look into this as liberal government in four years, uh, last four years term, they added only 600, almost 640 beds across all Ontario. You can imagine how much, how big is this number we are talking about. And the importance of long-term care beds is we are taking those long-term care cases out of the hospitals to the long-term care, new long-term care beds allowing the hospital bed to be used as a hospital bed. 
So this is decreasing the whole way, uh, um, um, the whole way care, the decreasing the amount of the waiting lists to be able to take the patients in short stay, two or three days, and and uh, and use the best resource of the bed of the hospital. Okay. Uh, also, we are investing in <clears throat> new hospitals. There's a new hospital in Brampton, a new uh, upgraded project in Saga in uh, Terillium, as well as the uh, Sherway uh, um, uh, Garden, the one in the Otoboko uh, borders, Mississauga, Otoboko Mississauga borders. Again, a new, new project to add new beds. Um, it's a big project of, of hospitalization to, um, to cope with the expanding mm -hmm. and the growing of Mississauga. Also, we are implementing <clears throat> a lot of innovation and free testing in uh, in uh, the Air Pearson Airport to make sure that we kind of try to capture the new cases of arrivals. Um, this is all just into the health. I'm I'm not gonna elaborate in into the small businesses grants which we give between ten and twenty thousand dollars bare business, bare small business to be helping them uh, uh, against the costs of the closing, uh, the closure when loss of income. And that's not only happened last year budget, but this year budget too. So if the business uh, uh, were, um, if the business was eligible to receive the fund, they will automatically receive it again this year. So another 10 to 20,000 bare, bare business. We um, uh, put, uh, I think, it's about $40 million into uh, um, um, uh, uh, Main Street project, which will allow small businesses to have footprint on the online in the virtualization, so they can help into having a site or some uh, uh, existence on the internet to be able to receive um, orders and, and uh, go on with their business online. Um, we are also uh, involved into the um, new enhancement, which we are trying to add with the federal government into the basic leave uh, uh, support from the federal government. But we are trying to make sure that there's gaps in there being covered. And we are working currently with the, with the federal government on that. So is your government satisfied with the federal government's vaccine plan and supply? I know certain things that you are satisfied with with the federal government and certain things that you're not <laughs> satisfied with. So it doesn't seem like this is one of those uh, things that you are satisfied with. Well, you know what, like uh, the main title for this stage yeah. of time now is vaccine. This is the magic word. We need vaccine. And Bermier Doc Ford, uh, clearly, clearly said it in multiple occasions, we need vaccine. And the federal government is supposedly to be uh, uh, able to supply us with enough vaccine. Again, you have to understand that Ontario is almost 50% of the population of Canada. Are we receiving 50% of the vaccine? No. Mm -hmm. Are we receiving enough vaccine to cover for everybody in Ontario? No. We tried some initiatives, Premier Ford tried some initiatives to reach out to our international alliance to get some uh, vaccines directly uh, to Ontario. But again, like this is not, shouldn't be part of our mandate. It should be more in the mandate of the federal government. That's, that's a major thing. The second item which we were hoping to have more, uh, I would say emphasize from the federal government in the budget is enhancing the program for the sick days leave the federal program to enhance the people and give the people who are in wait for the results or they have to stay home because of the COVID uh, uh, infection uh, coverage uh, payments to not be able to only protect the, their jobs but protect their income as well. So it sounds like you guys are doing a lot for small businesses from what you say um, in regard to grants, bursaries, um, the paid sick leave, but uh, how in particular, uh, how else are you helping small businesses in the face of this current stay at home emergency? Well, in, in many aspects of things which can sometimes look small things, like for example, we did some legislation changes so that we can uh, protect the small businesses from getting sued 
because of any uh, issue related to COVID, for example, if uh, if you go to a restaurant and and you acquired COVID, could be from the restaurant, could be from another location, and then you can go back and try to sue this uh, uh, restaurant saying, I got COVID and I, uh, I need this amount of uh, a compensation. Again, like, first of all, we don't, we can't prove, we don't have a, a physical proof that it's acquired by the small, by being in the small business. And the second thing is small businesses, they can do, as long as they do their precautions, which the government already told them, they uh, should not be liable for that because no matter what we try, we we could happen that there's uh, COVID uh, uh, infection. Um, so this is this is one of the small examples which we can protect small businesses with. All the amount of money we dismantled for small businesses for the PPEs and sanitization. All the uh, money we give the businesses for the, as I mean, the main street project, which allow them to create their own online portal to be able to continue their business online. The amount of money we uh, put with the federal government to subsidize the rent, 75% of the rent of the businesses, to be able to help them paying the rent uh, is is one uh, another aspect of help the provincial government did. The grant, which is 20, 10 to $20,000 last year, uh, ending in April, this program ends in April, we are renewed in the new budget for another 10 to 20,000 beer businesses in the new year 2021 budget. So we are doing our best. Oh, this is only, only during the COVID time. We already have another uh, whole project, which is uh, reopening Ontario, which will uh, reveal uh, coming time when we um, uh, when we start opening, how we gonna help businesses to re kick start their businesses again and stimulate their business to go back to their uh, original levels. There's about 980 million dollar uh, in the Ministry of uh, uh, been uh, supplied by the Ministry of. Uh, <clears throat> heritage, tourism, sports, and culture industries, the ministry which I am part of, to help small businesses, hospitality businesses, the restaurants, and all the businesses which got impacted with COVID to reopen again. But when time comes to that. Yes, and we have to acknowledge all the businesses that have closed. Uh, I know so many businesses, especially in Peel region and Toronto region, have been closed almost a year or over a year. Certain types of businesses is... It must be so hard on them. I, I, I can't imagine what they're going through. Um, so uh, on to my next point. Uh, to, today, Premier Doug Ford apologized for the increasing police enforcement powers and closing playgrounds. He said that the government moved too fast. How do you see the residents in your riding responding to this apology? Uh, it's too early. To, uh, to gauge the response for the apologies. The apology just issued today, so I don't, I can't give you a, a good idea about how, uh, how the uh, receiving of this apology, but the apology in itself is a very good evidence that Doug, our premier, always listened. Like he listened to the people, he listened to us, he listened to the whole caucus when we talked about uh, I mean, conduct our feedback. That's why when somebody either happy or angry, I mean, I will say both, either somebody's happy about something we did or somebody who's unhappy about something we did, it's my duty to conduct that voice in the caucus discussions and make sure it it's heard. Again, it's a collective uh, decision. It's not my decision. It's not be a mere dog decision by himself. It's a collective member's decision uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, sometimes it, it goes with the recommendations we talked about, sometimes it doesn't. But the most important thing, it's very difficult to go on public and say, yes, I think we uh, didn't get that right. But Premier Ford, one of the, I, I would say, one of the best, best characteristics in Doug Ford as a politician is he is there. He goes and say, yes, I I think we didn't get that right, and I take responsibility for that, and we'll fix it. Uh, I think this is a carriage, and I, uh, I myself inspired with that uh, speech today, Doug Ford said. 
Uh, he's been saying a lot of things. Uh, the premier also said that the province is now working <laughs> on a solution because the federal government hasn't expanded its own policy. Uh, what solutions do Ontarians expect from your government? Well, you know that we already did take some initiative in closing borders, trying to eliminate the movement, mobility of people. Again, like I can see a lot of uh, discussions in, the, in social media saying, why don't we close the airport? Why don't we close the borders? Like the flights bring people in and those people have to, uh, like sometimes they have infections and stuff. Well, again, this is beyond our jurisdiction. I can't close the borders, international borders. That's a federal government issue. I can't come any close to the airport. I have no jurisdiction on the airports and borders. This is uh, federal government, uh, and it's their decisions. They already tried to implement the three days quarantining thing to make sure that we test every single person coming. Yes, it was too late. That's what we asked it for since March last year. Mm -hmm. It came really, really late in the game, but it's better than never. Uh, it's better late than never. So uh, I think they are doing something. They are realizing that we... If we kept our borders open, there will continue stream of uh, infections coming, especially with the new variants. And hopefully, hopefully we don't receive another variant because it looks like this virus is uh, um, uh, changing very rapidly. And the new variant is much more uh, infectious than the older variant. So hopefully we don't see something coming. Do you have any messages to your residents in this dire <laughs> situation? Because I know they, there, there's a lot going on. They're, they're right next to this huge international airport. Uh, you guys are in a hot spot. Uh, Peel is. It's, it's a pretty horrible situation. So what do you have to tell them? Well, I, I understand that there's diverse opinions of people. I got some Constituents calling me saying there's nothing called COVID. Like, I'm just giving you the spectrum from people saying there's nothing called COVID. This is just a conspiracy theory and your government is f fear mongering. And uh, uh, this is just another uh, type of flu, like the flu we get every year. This is like the extreme uh, uh, right wing, the extreme left wing saying like we should close everything. We need a curfew, just close totally so that we can uh, eliminate more cases and and in between those two extremes we are trying to navigate with with uh, a solution which works for everyone so in my opinion the best thing is stay home stay safe make sure that your family is safe make sure yourself is safe make sure your loved ones are safe and the best thing is to avoid i'm not saying like curfew but if you don't have to go please stay home get the vaccine and again, like there's another discussion about the vaccine, people saying, no, the vaccine didn't got enough testing. We are not uh, uh, we are not feeling comfortable with AstraZeneca. If is AstraZeneca is a good vaccine. And I, I always say two things. Number one, every vaccine is approved by the federal government. So by the by the uh, Health Canada. So it should be good. Number two, which vaccine is the best? The best vaccine is the vaccine you can get now, not tomorrow, now. So, you know what? It's kind of tricky because I know uh, talking to some of my friends who are paramedics, they've been saying that a lot of uh, the cases that they've seen of COVID-19 have been very mild. And then um, I hear from, say, the Mississauga <laughs> hospitals that they're overwhelmed. Uh, they don't have enough hospital beds sometimes. Um, and they're yes. having to choose, right? <laughs> so it's it's a tricky situation, I guess. Certain people have it different ways. Um, uh, to my next point, though, your government claims that the 2021 budget is the next phase of the Ontario response to COVID-19. How so? Well, again, like the COVID uh, added a big cost in our health system from uh, testing from vaccination, from personals to cope with this uh, huge amount of cases, uh, protection. Um, this all add a lot of cost in our medical system, which is overwhelmed already. So that's a huge cost in the new budget. So to protect the people, 
Number two is to make sure that um, our businesses stay float, our business sustain during this hard time. Number three, preparing for opening again Ontario for business. So this is this is like three pillars which we have to keep focus on. And I think our budget did a great job in supplying enough funds for the three streams. Also, <coughs> the education. Uh, having education, some uh, online education, which can allow us to continue the experience of education or uh, study during the COVID time or during the lock time, having that infrastructure have enough uh, teachers to uh, teach online, as, as well as taking the opportunity and having a lot of funds to uh, upgrade and maintain the infrastructure of the schools. Like uh, Minister Latchi just announced $656.5 million to um, uh, upgrade the education infrastructure and, and repair and expand school schooling system. So again, if the uh, I hear some people saying that we are cutting the budget of education, I think the education got uh, uh, more than what they get usually because now we have two streams. We have in-person and online as well. <clears throat> so that's, that's in my opinion, um, uh, what's going on in the new budget. Uh, now back to the vaccine plan. The opposition is not satisfied with your government's vaccine plan. NDP leader Andrea Horvath said that she has no doubt that the federal government has done a poor job of procuring vaccines, but that doesn't let Ford's government off the hook. Um, and then she was saying the messed up distribution system here in Ontario sits at the feet of Doug Ford and his government. How would you defend this criticism? Well, I, it's very simple. As I mentioned, like if they are talking about distribution of the vaccine, mm -hmm. I would look back into the every year flu shot. Like we never heard about somebody saying, I would like to get the flu shot, but I can't get it. Or we have to retrieve the old people to get the flu shot first or anything of that. Why? Because we had enough vaccine. So if we have enough vaccine, we wouldn't see this problem. But again, it's putting us into our shoulders to bury to rise who get the vaccine first and who gets the second again like we can we can discuss that as long as we want your opinion about no 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 we should vaccinate the uh, um the um, cur um, um critical services as uh, the um, uh, workers first before the old people because we can protect the old people by uh, eliminating any uh, visits and stuff. Again, we can discuss that as much as we want and we can have diverse opinion. But the right opinion is if we have enough vaccine, we would do both in the same time. Well, right? Yes. Uh, thank you so much, MPP. Sharif Sabaway <clears throat> for joining me here at the International News Channel. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julia. It was nice to see you again. And uh, I hope I, I managed to uh, add some information to the public. And please reach out to me anytime. I'm more than happy. Thank you very much.